So you've probably seen the videos of these celebrities, the Mark Wahlberg types, flexing their crazy morning routine. Wake up at 2 a.m. for a two and a half hour workout, followed by another half an hour of stretching. Then it's deep meditation in the cryo chamber for another hour. Then I'm gonna drink my detox cleansing avocado and broccoli juice that you can use to look as shredded as me. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, I also take my special multivitamins at this time of day. But five hours later, it's time to start the day. My God, that was even faster than yesterday. This is what it's come to. As soon as anyone brings up morning routines, we immediately start thinking of all these fake alphas. Half of them are probably lying about what their real routine looks like, and they're probably just trying to get you to buy a product. And for guys like you and me who are literally fighting a losing battle against our phone every time we're waking up, like I swear your phone is the most comforting thing when you're lying down in bed. Hearing about that type of ultra disciplined, not to mention unsustainable morning routine just kind of makes you give up on the idea entirely. I remember a time not even that long ago where I just couldn't get out of bed. And I'm not talking about I had school and I didn't want to. Everything basically just felt meaningless. Well, this video just got a bit dark, didn't it? But nowadays it's easy for a young man to feel that way. When your life is lacking structure, lacking purpose, it is very easy to fall into this depressed, low energy state. And when you just feel like you have no reason to exist, the last thing you wanna do is get out of bed. But ironically, it was a good morning routine that got me out of that state, that brought those positive things back into my life. My sense of purpose, my structure. It made me rediscover my passion for living. I'm not fucking joking here. It literally made me enjoy life again. That's all we want at the end of the day. All of that came from following a good morning routine. It just wasn't one of these dickhead fake alpha routines. The best routine is one that you can maintain every single day. And that's gonna differ from person to person. It's not gonna look the same for everyone. But the really successful ones that people end up carrying on for years and years usually have a few things in common. A realistic time commitment, not too long, but not too short either. They aren't overly complex. The routine is limited to just a few activities. And finally, they are actually enjoyable. And when I say enjoyable, don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about hopping on World of Warcraft at 9 a.m., slurping your monster energy. I mean the things that are scientifically proven to give you long-term happiness and fulfillment. That's how I've designed the routine that I'm gonna give you. So here's the morning routine that got me out of depression. So we're gonna start the day by getting up at 8 a.m. Wake up times are some of the most widely debated things in the morning routine community and it's the stupidest thing ever. It literally does not matter. It is simply whatever works for you. Waking up at 2 a.m. in the morning does not guarantee success like a lot of people would have you believe. And on the other hand, waking up at 12 isn't gonna suit most people living in the real world. Basically, I've just suggested 8 a.m. here. It's not set in stone, but it's a reasonable time. It's not too early, it's not too late, and it's gonna help with the most important thing of all. Without going into too much depth because I'm not making a sleep video, Video. Sleep is actually one of the most important things when it comes to mood regulation. And when it comes to sleep quality, the most important thing is consistency. Waking up and going to bed at the exact same time of day every day. Literally, the guy who regularly only gets like six hours of sleep a night but has a good consistent schedule is going to feel better than the guy who gets nine hours of sleep but one night he's going to bed at 1 a.m., another night he's going to bed at 10 p.m. Consistency is the most important aspect of all of that. And that's what I want you to remember. 8.05, drink a glass of water. To be honest, I can't really tell you how I formed this habit. I think I read online somewhere that it's good for your energy levels to just drink a bunch of water as soon as you wake up. But either way, it literally takes like two minutes and it's healthy for you. So just fucking do it, man. At 8.15 a.m., we have a non-negotiable. In fact, I'd actually say that this has had like the biggest impact on improving my mood. And that is stepping outside and getting sunlight within the first half an hour of the day. And I got this advice from a guy called Andrew Huberman. You might know who he is. He's a, he's a famous neuroscientist, I believe. And he goes very in depth on topics like these. Like pretty sure he's got a fucking two hour long podcast just on this topic of getting sunlight in the morning. And I would never have known this back in the day, but now that I do, it just seems like the most obvious thing in the world. Getting direct sunlight this early in the morning is sending signals to your body that it's daytime. This is the time to be alert. It's basically taking you out of sleep mode, that low energy state and setting your body up for the day of work. And I'm also someone who is very sensitive to weather and I'm willing to bet that you are as well. You might not realize it but the weather conditions actually have a really big impact on your mood. Like when it's dark and rainy which is more or less a third of the year here in the UK. I don't really want to do anything with myself. I just feel a bit down and out. Whereas if I'm waking up and opening the curtains and it's a sunny day that I'm looking at, I don't know what it is. I'm just automatically in a good mood. I can't explain all the scientific stuff, but I'm not going to question it. I know that spending time in the sun puts me in a good frame of mind. Even when it's
it doesn't look sunny, like it's quite overcast and cloudy, the sun is still there. Spending time outside is still gonna improve your mood and make you alert. You just gotta sit outside a bit longer than you usually would. And if it is just a rainy, grim fucking day, you can actually buy these artificial sun lamps that simulate the same type of light you get from the sun. And those really come in handy in the winter. So yeah, I usually spend about half an hour or 40 minutes outside in the sun. And that's what I'm getting on with a few other activities. At 8.15, as soon as we get outside, we meditate. Now, if you don't meditate or you think meditation is gay or some shit like that, I think you need to subscribe to me, to be honest, because you're obviously lacking some kind of guidance in your life and you need me to come set you straight. If you have any mental health issue, literally anything at all, I can guarantee meditation is going to help with that. It calms your mind down. It makes you less anxious. It makes you enjoy life more. Who wouldn't want that? Some people say, oh, it's too difficult or I can't focus. Yeah, motherfucker, that's the point. You're not going to have mastered any skill within your first two sessions of doing it. There's half a million different types of meditation. So just try a bunch of different ones and find the one that you like. At the moment, I practice open awareness meditation, which is literally just sitting outside and focusing on the sounds around you. Do you know how fucking easy that is? You have no excuse not to. So then at 8.30 a.m., after 15 minutes of meditation, I read. This is one of my favorite parts of the day. In the early morning, your brain is at its most malleable. It's at its most receptive to learning new information and remembering it. So if you want to learn something and really hold on to it in your mind, it's a good idea to do so in the morning. Reading 25, 30 pages of something educational in the morning is a really good way to get ahead of all these other people. I'd like to think some part of my YouTube success is down to that. If you want to read Harry Potter, then I'm not going to stop you, but you should be taking advantage of this time, bro. And in addition to that, that. Learning something new every day, pursuing an area of interest is scientifically proven to make us feel better in the long term. It improves your mental health, it makes you feel more fulfilled. Start reading. At nine o'clock sharp, we have exercise, which is another thing people just needlessly overcomplicate. If you're actually depressed or you have a hard time controlling your moods and you're not exercising, you are literally shooting yourself in the foot. As far as I'm concerned, if that's you, you literally have no right to complain. Exercise in the morning does not have to be some crazy two hour fucking hyper focused cardio and resistance training i might be completely blowing your mind here but it is possible to relax and exercise at the same time something really nice that i like to do in the morning is take a short walk because i basically live in the countryside i want to take advantage of all this fresh clean nature if that's not really a thing or you live in the city or just a shit hole basically you could try doing stretches in your bedroom a very good friend of mine loves doing yoga first thing in the morning any of these things would be good it doesn't have to to be a really really intense workout just something that's going to get the blood flowing that's going to help you feel a bit more awake and alert get those positive endorphins and finally at 9 25 a.m i've clumped together a bunch of smaller tasks that i'm not really going to go into detail on brushing your teeth having a shower just the usual everyday stuff that i'm not going to bother to show you a video of then once you've done that i want you to sit down at a desk pen in your hand paper in front of you and i want you to acknowledge all of the tasks that have to be completed that day just go through all of the items in the list one by one write down how and when you're going to do each thing and be specific about it and the reason i'm including this in the schedule is because when you're depressed it's very easy for your life to fall apart for you to stop working for you to start looking after yourself properly and making this list is essentially breaking everything down into more manageable steps it's going to help you know what your priorities are what you should be doing and when you should be doing it it just makes the whole thing a lot less overwhelming and as easy as it needs to be you can make this plan in the morning as part of the routine you could do it the night before just make sure you're actually filling your days up with something just because you had a productive morning doesn't mean you get to spend the rest of the day lounging around playing video games and fapping but all in all how long did that routine take i'd say it was barely an hour and a half most of it was just spent sitting down relaxing but that's the beauty of it it's simple and it's easy to repeat sure you can tweak the time and duration of each activity to suit whatever fits you but this combination of activities i can guarantee is going to set you on the right path you're not going to be feeling depressed and low energy in the mornings you're going to wake up and feel excited to get on with your day you're going to really enjoy it and that's the best thing about it so i want you to try this for five days and then come back to my comment section because I promise you, even if it's just by 1%, you're going to feel better. Stay sharp, stay ahead. I'm out.